Hello everybody and welcome. In this video, I'm going to quickly take you through the steps that you need to take in order to get a static website hosted in AWS. So let's not waste any time and we'll just jump straight into it. Okay, so what I have on my screen at the moment is an Angular 9 application that I'll be deploying to AWS. As you can see, it has a My Courses area here on the home page, and up in the nav bar, I also have a link to an about page. So if I click on this link, you'll see we've got routing working and it's shown us another page. Also, as it currently stands, the links will also work if I change them manually like this. We can see we're back on the home page again. However, if I put in the wrong URL in the address bar, say I put or I just throw away an E here, you'll see that we get a not found page. So that's how it currently works. Now, if you want to use the same application I'm using here, the source code is available in GitHub, which I have all the information in the description of this video. So enough on that, let's get this bad boy deployed now as a static website inside of AWS. Step one, get your code ready for production. So as you can see on my screen right now, I have an Angular 9 application. So the first thing I'm going to do here is run an npm install. Now that I've done that, I'm just going to quickly clear my screen and then run a custom script that I have in my application. So I've got one called build colon prod. And what this essentially does is run the Angular CLI for a production build. Once this is done, a new folder over here called dist will be created with a subfolder called Lora Digital DevOps, and this will contain all the files we need to deploy to AWS. Step two, registering a domain name in AWS. So right now, I'm on the AWS Management Console on the dashboard page. Now to register a domain name, we have to go to a service called Route 53. So I'm just selecting that right now, and that will get you to a page that looks like this to start out if you've never registered a domain name before. Also note at the top here that the region has been set to global. So let's now register a domain. I'm gonna click this Get Started Now button, and that's gonna take me to a registered domain screen. Now, if you had other domains, they'd be listed here, but I don't have any at the moment. So I'm now gonna click Register Domain, and this takes us to a screen where we get to choose our domain name. Now, firstly, the domain for .com is going to cost you $12, but I'm happy with that, so I'm going to choose Lyrad Digital DevOps. I'm going to check if that's available by clicking check here. And as we can see, it is in fact available, and the price for one year is $12. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to add it to my cart. And now we can see on the right hand side over here that it's being currently set to be registered for one year at $12. Now we can go up to 10 here. So now I'm just going to come down and click continue. And now we'll get to a page where you have to register your contact details. Now I'm not going to mention much here, you just need to fill it in yourself. So once you've entered in your contact details and you press continue, you'll get to a screen that looks a little something like this with a skip email modal in the middle of it. Now, basically this is just telling you that you need to check your email so we can close that. And I'm just gonna go, I've agreed with the terms and conditions. I'm then gonna go over to my email account and basically find my verification email and click on the link inside the email. This will take you to a screen that will tell you that your contact details have been verified. So all we need to do now is come over to this verification screen again, come to the very bottom here, and where it says refresh status, click that, and now you should see that it says that your account's verified. With that now done, I can come over and complete the order, just like that. And what you'll get now is a little modal that will say that your order was submitted successfully, and it just tells you it takes a little bit of time to process. So we can just close that, and at this point, your domain name has now been registered. Now it still needs to be processed by Amazon. So if we go to domains here and you can see currently 
that the domain registration is still in progress. Now, that means that Amazon has to do some things on their side before it's ready for you to use. Now, we can easily track this by just coming over to the little refresh button over here on the right and checking if this disappears, right? So we can continue to refresh this until it goes away and it'll look like this. Now, for me personally, it took about 15 minutes to get to this point. But at this point, our domain is registered and we can click on registered domains to just prove that. Now, if I click on this, well, we're gonna get a bunch of details about the registered domain that we just registered. Now, just for privacy reasons, I'm hiding my contact information here as well as my administrative contact and my technical contact. But all the rest of the DNS information is available as you can see on screen. Along with this, we have our first hosted zone that's set up inside of AWS. So if I come over and click on it, which is this link here, we can see we've got our LoRaDigitalDevOps.com hosted zone. Now, if I go inside this, we can see that we've got some records. Now, I won't explain what they are at this time. We'll come back to this a little bit later. Step three, creating our first website bucket. So once again, I'm back on the main management console screen and I'm going to now go into the S3 service. Once you get in there, you may have a list of buckets here. In my case, I don't. So I'm going to create my very first bucket. So I'm just gonna click create bucket and inside the name that I'm gonna put here is the name of the domain. So www.loradigitaldevops.com. That's the name of the domain I'm gonna have for later. I'm gonna leave it set to Sydney because that's local to where I am. And for everything else, I'm just gonna leave as the default and click create bucket. And now we have our very first bucket. Now it's not a website yet, so I'm gonna click into it and it will come up with a screen that has the following. I'm gonna click on this properties tab and now I'm gonna come over to state website hosting, click on that and then select the option, use this bucket to host a website. For the moment, I'm just gonna set my index document. So that will be my index.html that I have for my Angular app. And then I'm just gonna come down to the bottom of this and save it. So there's a button here, just click save. And now we have a website that's hosted. Now to get the URL, you can click on it again, click on that link, just like so. And you'll get an error like this for the moment, but at least we have the website bucket set up. Step four, uploading our production code to the bucket. So right now I'm back inside of my bucket and I've clicked on the overview tab. Now we could upload files by clicking on upload, but instead what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to take these files that we have here, which is my production code, and I'm just gonna drag it and drop it. And now we have all our files available. All I have to do now is just click upload. And my files are uploaded. And once we get to this point, we can see that we've succeeded down here. So now that we've done this, let's try clicking on our website and refreshing it. Note, still can't seem to see the website. Now that's because we don't have the right level of access, which leads us to step five, seeing the permissions on our website bucket. So I'm back on the bucket screen here and I'm on the permissions tab this time. Now the first thing I wanna do is I wanna edit my public access details. I'm gonna uncheck block all public access and usually that's what most people do here. However, I know for a fact that I can leave these first two settings on. They won't affect anything that we need to do here. The second last one is so I can basically set up a policy and for the last one, that always has to be unchecked because that allows us public read access out from the internet. So just click save here, and now just type confirm here, just to confirm that that's what I wanna do. So now that that's successful, what I'm gonna do now is go over to my bucket policy here. So I'm gonna click on this, and what I'm gonna paste in here is some JSON, all right? Or basically, yeah, it's some JSON. Now this represents a typical policy that will apply public read access to all files inside of this bucket. 
So basically, I just need to make one change here to the policy that I just pasted, and I need to apply it to my bucket. So in this position here where I've got example bucket, I just need to type www.lyraddigitaldevops.com, which is the name of my bucket. Now, once I save this, you will now see that this bucket has public access, and that's denoted by this little public symbol here. So now that that's done, I'm just gonna quickly go back to my public access settings, and I'm going to edit them like so. If I scroll now, clicking that, and I'm just gonna to toggle this third setting back on because I've changed the bucket policy and I don't need to do that anymore. So we just leave the last one unchecked and that's all we need to do. Now I'm gonna come over to my website and refresh. And now we can see it. And there it is for you to consume. And I'll just click on the links here and just make sure that the about and the home pages are working, which they are. Step six, and potentially optional for you, is fixing up the routes. So if you're using a single page application like I am here, you may run into this problem of routes not working when you refresh the page. So if I come over here and click refresh, you'll see now that I get a 404 not found. And that's because there's no folder inside the bucket that's called about. So what we have to do in this situation is redirect all error statuses like this back to our index.html page, and that will take care of this problem. So to do that, I'm gonna come back over to my management console here. I'm gonna click on the properties tab for my bucket, come back to state web hosting, and where it says error document, I'm just gonna also redirect that to my index.html by just typing index.html. So if I go ahead and now save this, like so, I can now come back to my website, and when I refresh this time, we can see that once again, the routes now work. So if I change this to say home now, hopefully this will work, and it does, and now you can see that even we can put in a bad URL, say anything, and we'll get our not found page now. Step seven, creating our first A record. So I'm back on my hosted zone screen for my Lyrad Digital DevOps domain. The first thing I'm gonna do here is go create record set, and I'm gonna enter in www into this name field here, because that's what I wanna set the A record for. It needs to be set as an alias, so I'm gonna click yes here, and then in the alias target, I'm gonna actually target my S3 website bucket and that's all I'm going to do for now, and click Create. Now, once that's done, it will take a little bit of time to propagate. For me, this took about five minutes, but it can take up to 48 hours. But eventually, you'll be able to go over to your browser and put in the domain that you just added, and everything should just work as expected. So as you can see here, I've now got my website working under lyraddigitaldevops.com. Well, in fact, it's www.lyraddigitaldevops.com, but Chrome masks that. So now you can see it's over here. Step eight, and also optional, is setting up logging for our website bucket. So I'm currently on the main bucket list screen in S3, and the first thing I'm going to do is create a new bucket. So I'm gonna click Create Bucket, and the bucket name I'm going to give is pretty much my domain name with a prefix of logs. So logs.www.lyradigitaldevops.com. I'm gonna leave it as Sydney and not do anything else there because that's the region I'm currently hosting my website bucket in and everything else I'm going to leave. So I'm just gonna click create bucket like so. And that's created a new bucket where our logs will go. So now that we've done that, we now need to configure our website bucket to store its logs into the bucket that we just created. So to do that, I need to come down to my website bucket and click on it. And then I need to come over to the properties tab. And once I do that, there's a new thing here called server access logging. We just need to enable that. And then I need to choose the bucket that we just created. So I'm gonna choose that right there. 
And now this target prefix, it can be whatever you like. I'm just gonna call it production and leave it at that for now. And just go over and click save. And that's been set up now, but we need to test it. So what I'm gonna do, it's gonna to come to our website and I'm going to refresh this a few times just to generate some re random requests. So click on a few things, refresh a few times, and then we'll go and see what is available inside that new blog bucket. So I'm back on the main S3 bucket list screen, and I'm gonna go into the logs bucket now to see what's there. And as you can see, at the moment, there's nothing. Even if I refresh, we don't see any logs. Now this is quite normal, as it takes a bit of time for the logs to come through. But eventually, they do. As you can see here, we have a log entry for one of our requests. Okay, now I'm not gonna open it up because I need to download it and show it and everything, but you can look at that in your own time. But it's just a resource that you can just download as any other object you can from S3. Now, it did take me a long time before I got a log entry. It took me personally about 30 minutes. So just be patient. Step nine, creating a website bucket for our root domain. So it's quite common practice for you to create a redirect on your root domain to a subdomain. So this generally means that you'll do something like loraddigitaldevops.com in your browser and it'll redirect to www.loraddigitaldevops.com. Now to do this in AWS, we need to create another bucket for our root domain. So once again, I'm back on my main bucket list screen and I'm gonna come over and press create bucket. Now all I need to do here is create a bucket with the name of my root domain, which in this case is loradigitaldevops.com. I'm going to leave everything else the same and just press create bucket. Then once this is done, I need to go in and configure it as a website. So I'll just click on the link here and then I'll come over to properties. Once I'm in properties, once again, I'll go to state website and this time I'm gonna click on redirect requests. And what I wanna do here is type the domain www.loraddigitaldevops.com. And that's a entry that I've already created. And here, I'm just gonna set the protocol to HTTP. Now I can basically, once I save this, go over to my browser, take that URL that was just in that area and paste it here in the browser. And it should go to our website. And as you can see, it does. And over here in the top, it also says www.loraddigitaldevops.com. So this is perfect. This is what we want. Step 10, setting up the A record for your root domain. So this is pretty straightforward. We've seen how we already have to do this. So I'm back on my hosted zone screen and I'm just gonna create yet another record set. This time I'm not gonna specify a name because I don't need one for my root domain. I'm gonna set it as an alias and I'm gonna target the new bucket we just created. And that's all I have to do here. So I click create and the A record is now created for our root domain. Now we'll just wait about five minutes. Then we should be able to come over to our browser, throw it into the address bar up the top here, and we should be able to see our website once again. But not only that, as you can see in the address bar, it's also redirected to www.loradigitaldevops.com, which is what we asked it to do in the website bucket. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to my channel, and hit that notification bell. And I'll see you all next time.